Hey everybody, this is Steve Disher with uh, ISP Supplies and LearnMicroTik.com and today I want to talk to you about a feature that's found in MicroTik Router OS and it's called IP Cloud. And the first thing I always recommend doing is taking a look at MicroTik's wiki which is found at uh, wiki.microtik.com which you see I have pulled up on my browser here right now. And over in the search bar you're going to type IP Cloud and if you uh, click the magnifying glass we should uh, get the wiki entry for IP cloud and here it is now so my recommendation is that you take a quick look at this particular uh, feature in router OS take a look at what IP cloud does and then you can work through this tutorial and see how to actually set it up on a router so we're going to be looking at IP cloud today now the purpose of IP cloud is to take the place of a service you may fam be familiar with already called dynamic DNS and the situation is simply that our location here where we're going to be working our MicroTik router has a dynamic IP address that's assigned by the ISP and with dynamic addressing it can change at any time and typically does change fairly often so by using this feature IP cloud we can dynamically update a DNS entry somewhere in our DNS records so we can always get to this router remotely now some uses for this could be a VPN if we're doing a site-to-site -site VPN we could use the IP cloud feature to update our DNS entry so that the remote site can always connect back to a home office or vice versa. Um, another particular uh, application for IP cloud is when we have services behind our firewall router that we want to allow access to from the outside world. Some examples of that might be a remote desktop or a mail server or a uh, web server. So those are a few of the applications for IP Cloud. So let's jump right in now and see how to actually set it up. So first of all, to find IP Cloud, you're going to click IP Cloud. And this is where you'll find the configuration screen. Now it's very simple to set up, but more importantly, I want to show you how to use it and a little trick that we use quite a bit. So uh, once again, it's IP Cloud. And once you've clicked it, we're going to click the button here, the checkbox that says DDNS enabled, meaning dynamic DNS or domain name service. And we'll hit apply. And when we do that, it's going to update the DNS entry for this particular router. Now, the way it determines the IP address is by going to a site on the internet that MicroTik maintains called mynetname.net, determines its public IP address, and then it assigns that public IP address to a DNS name. The DNS name is simply the serial number of the router. So if you look at this closely, the serial number of this router starts out with 71B as in Bravo, and so the DNS entry is the serial number dot sn dot mynetname dot net. So we have some options here. We could copy this to our clipboard, and then the next time we want to log into this router, we simply paste that entry into our connect to line. And if we want, we could even save this as one of our managed routers in our managed router list. Now, uh, once again, where does that particular DNS name come from and if you look under system and router board you'll see the serial number of the router is right here and you'll also notice that the serial number for the router matches the dynamic DNS entry. So in simple terms that's how you set it up it periodically updates itself just in case the IP address has changed and you'll also see that it's going to leave an IP cloud entry in the log for this particular router saying that the IP address changed and the time that it changed. So that's how you set it up in a nutshell quite easily and so now what do we do with this? Well you could either continue using it the way I just described where you use the entire serial number of the router dot sn dot mynet name dot net but for me that's a little bit cumbersome and since I operate my own DNS server I have the ability to create something called a C name within my dynamic DNS. Um, so what is a C name? Well, without getting too deep, it's simply a name that stands for another name in DNS world. So what we're going to do is go into Power Admin, and Power Admin is the DNS server that I use for 
uh, my purposes, maybe you use uh, GoDaddy's DNS function or whatever it is, doesn't really matter. The concepts are basically the same. So in this case, I'm using one of these domains that uh, I don't really use for anything else called gotthenet.net. And I go into this zone and I go in and create a new DNS entry. And so I'll just paste in that serial number .sn.mynetname.net. And the type of record we're going to create is a CNAME record. And then under the content is where we're going to put the name of the router. So in this case, I'll just call it uh, my router. And now I'll hit add record and it worked correctly that time. So there we go. There is a new CNAME we've created. All right. So now if we want to test this, we can do it. Uh, we'll simply just bring up a command prompt here and we're going to, to type ping and we're going to first paste in the old IP cloud name. And you'll notice we get a response from this IP address 2454.165.239. Now we'll do the same thing, but we're going to type ping my router dot got the net dot net. And when we hit the enter key, we get the same IP address resolution. So the bottom line, this little trick, it makes it much easier to remember this friendly router name using the CNAME function in our DNS compared to the serial number of the router .sn.mynetname.net. All right, so that's it for IP Cloud. I hope this helps you when you're doing site-to-site -site VPNs or when you want to allow access to services that are behind a firewall that does not have a static public IP. And that's it for today. Check out our blog. Uh, our blog is found at stevedisher.com. Uh, also, uh, blog.ispsupplies.com two places to look for tips and tricks. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us today.